Hello and welcome to another episode of Monster Island Radio. I'm Ben and obviously I'm joined by... Graham. Oh, who else? The obvious one. Yes. <laughs> uh, so yeah, here we are, hot off the heels of um, Godzilla against Mechagodzilla with its own direct sequel, Godzilla Tokyo SOS. Now, last episode, you were looking forward to this movie. Yes. And I, I was less enthused. Well, my, my reasoning was that we, we talked about Megagirus and that was poor. Same team did against Mechagodzilla. Poor again. <laughs> and I was like, I'll give them the benefit of the doubt. They've had a lot of practice. Mm. Maybe Tokyo SOS will be, will be better. It'll be the one. It'll be the one. <laughs> Third time lucky, right? Right. Okay. So I'll give a spoiler filled summary for everyone listening. And then we'll have a spoiler filled discussion. Exactly. Right, I've managed to keep this one a little bit shorter because I noticed my summaries were basically turning turning into a thesis about each episode. So, uh, actually, this one was quite a fast turnaround from the last movie because, actually, I think with the Millennium Era, it's been, there's been one every year since Godzilla 2000. Mm. So they've been churning them out quite quickly. And so this one was like back-to-back same people. So, um, yeah, Godzilla against Mechagodzilla was out in 2002. This one's 2003. And it picks up where... Um, Godzilla against Mechagodzilla left off they, where they ended their battle in a draw and both retreated heavily damaged um, but in this movie we open up with uh, Shinichi Chujo who was the main character from 1961's Mothra uh, he's at home with his nephew Yoshito and his grandson Shun when suddenly the Shobujin twins that Shinichi helped rescue in the original Mothra movie appear before him warning them that they need to put Godzilla's bones back to rest. And of course, Mechagodzilla is made up from the bones of um, the 1954 Godzilla. Yeah, of course, yeah. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> and that uh, if they want to fight off Godzilla, they should leave it to Mothra and not use Mechagodzilla. And if they don't heed their warning, then Mothra is going to wreak revenge on them. So Shinichi urges the Prime Minister to halt the Mechagodzilla Kiyu project, but the self-defense force is reluctant to do so because they don't want to rely on a kaiju that had previously attacked the city to come and defend them, which is understandable, to be fair. Mm. And, you know, they've sunk a lot of money into this, so <laughs> may as well stick with it, right? So Godzilla starts to resurface, destroying a US submarine and killing uh, a kaiju called Kamibus. Uh, so they dispatch Mechagodzilla into battle once more. Um, I should mention here, actually, that Shinichi's nephew, Yoshito, is uh, one of the engineers who is working on repairing Mechagodzilla. Yes, it's a multifaceted connection. Yes, it is. You've got the yeah. Mothra connection and the direct Mecha got to the connection. Exactly. So Shinichi's grandson took the Shobujin's words to heart and cre- started creating a giant Mothra symbol out of school desks in the playground to summon her. She appears, followed shortly after by her two lava, to help defend against Godzilla alongside Kiyu. Kiyu's damaged and needs to be repaired by Yoshito who climbs aboard and successfully repairs him, only to get trapped inside when Mechagodzilla returns to battle. Mothra sacrifices herself to save her children, who then avenge her by encapsulating Godzilla, leaving him immobile, creating an opening for Mechagodzilla to grab Godzilla and send him back to the sea, while also returning the 1954 Godzilla bones back to the sea, like the Shobujin's twins had uh, requested, uh, with Yoshito narrowly escaping Mechagodzilla before plunging into the water. So, did I miss anything? <laughs> Not really. I think that kind of captures it all, doesn't it, really? Um, So, just a quick first impression, I suppose. Uh, I could feel myself actually warming to this continuity of films much more than before. Right. Almost like it's worn me down, I suppose. Or maybe it's like Stockholm Syndrome, I'm not not entirely sure. (laughs) (laughs) I I feel like I'm kind of getting used to this uh, way of making a Godzilla movie, I suppose, getting in the mindset a bit more. it's, it wasn't outstanding, and it's still not really my jam, but I, I can kind of appreciate what it is that you know, they're aiming to do. Um, I mean, I'll get into the, some of the bigger issues I had with it a bit later, but, I mean, what were your initial thoughts? I mean, do you think it was a step up or a step down from the previous movie? I think there's credence in what you're saying, that the more you watch of these, the more you're probably likely to, to enjoy them, I think, in a way, because you do kind of get used to it. But... As soon as I started watching this one, I was like, this isn't the same as as um, Godzilla against Mechagodzilla. There's something different. And it has a different writer to the previous movie. And I've thought about this because I was watching it. I was like, 
they 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 just they obviously it's a sequel, but they've canned all of the characters. None of the characters from Godzilla against Mechagodzilla return in this movie, except for Akane once. Um, sure, like a cameo. Yeah, but um, and I was like, well, only a different writer would do this. So I, I looked up and yeah, like this very much different person. And I was like, they've obviously just decided they're going to chuck out all the crap stuff and put in all their own things, which you can say like, oh, if you like the previous movie, that'd be a disappointment. But the structure and the characters in this movie was so much better that even though the story is actually simplistic to a fault, perhaps, and the action is a bit disjointed. I felt like the movie was just like night and day in quality. It was so much better than against Mechagodzilla to me. Okay. Probably the most I've enjoyed any of the Millennium Era movies. <sighs> wow. That's a big statement. Yeah, and that includes um, no. all, all Out Attack. Oh my goodness, what? Yeah, I was like... I am very surprised. I was in it to win it. From the <laughs> beginning, I could see that they, they there wasn't that much action in, in Mechagodzilla as a movie. And we, we complained a bit about that. What was there was right. good, but yes. there wasn't much of it. Mm. In this movie, there was maybe three times the amount of action in the film, but it wasn't actually, the effects weren't as good. The compositing was a bit rushed and like the lighting didn't always match. And there were scenes where like, you know, Godzilla might be punched to the floor, but you don't actually see him. He's just like standing in one shot and then the next shot he's already down and there seems it's a bit disjointed. Yeah. But because it keeps on coming and it's like pacey and like the story's simple and easy to follow and the characters are very kind of well established. They're not like deep characters, but you know, you can understand their motivations and their emotions. It's just like, well, it's just stuff to watch and there's a story and I actually kind of care if these people like live or die and the action's like fun. And so, yeah, I was, really enjoyed it, all of it. I thought it was really good, really good. I wonder if you were just in a really good mood when you watched it. Well, I, <laughs> I said in the last one, like you were saying, that I, I was looking forward to it. And obviously I was being a bit sarcastic. <laughs> I wasn't really looking forward to it, but I didn't want to go into the movie with bad vibes. because then I didn't want to bring bad vibes to the discussion and be like, oh, you know, yeah. we don't want to just get into a habit of like, oh, we don't like this director. This is his yes. third one. And, you know, we don't like this. Don't like I don't want to just keep on saying the same stuff. So I was really just like open mind. I'm not really in the mood for a sequel to Against Mechagodzilla because it sucked. <laughs> But I was like, okay, let's try it. And uh, yeah, maybe that really helped. Yeah, I had the same kind of notion as I was watching. I was like, am I just thinking too much about who who's involved with this and letting that colour my opinion? So I did try and like consciously kind of break that and just enjoy it for what it was. Mm. Um, I think what helped me enjoy it more, actually, was thinking of it as a sequel to Mothra. Because it was, I think it was as much a sequel to Godzilla against Mechagodzilla as it was to the original Mothra. Sure. Uh, the spotlight was mostly on um, you know, Chujo's nephew. Mm. And like, you know, giving Akane the old heave-ho. <laughs> so I actually, I, I watched Mothra as well. Okay. Just to see if I could kind of piece bits together. And seeing Mothra and then seeing um, Tokyo SOS kind of together made it a, a much better movie. And I would imagine if you watched Mothra and then watch this again i think you'd probably enjoy it even more it's an interesting almost like people go on about the mcu like the marvel cinematic universe and how it's like this conjoined franchise but really this movie is a fine example of doing exactly that yeah exactly it sequelizes the original godzilla movie it's a sequel to mecha godzilla and the mothra and then there's other kaiju stuff so it's like yeah it's a good a good shot at that now, I feel like the, the Mothra half of things was the stronger element of the story because yeah, when you when, when you got the Kiryu side of things, it's sort of, for me, I think it kind of treads the same ground. Yoshito was the, like, you know, the protagonist, like, underappreciated, just like Akane. Get, get, getting shit from Akiba, just like Akane did from that other guy from her platoon. Mm. Um, and then who ends up saving the day in, like, a little, you know... 30 second redemption arc. Yeah, you're right. And then, yeah. then, we've, then we've got Yoshito climbing aboard Kiyu to help bring it back to life, just like Akane. You know, it's, I mean, th those story beats were the same. It's interesting, though, that I didn't really pick up on that while I was watching it, but you're exactly right that it, the story is effectively identical. Now that I know it's that uh, a new writer, it's kind of interesting that that Mechagodzilla half was almost lifted straight out, and it's like, okay, we've got that bit kind of sorted. Let's do the bit I want to do, which is the Mothra half of things. Hmm. Yeah, it was really the pace and the structure and just the overall, like, the way the characters were very succinct in their interactions. Like, when you have that scene 
um, where the guy like catches the fly in his face and all that stupid stuff. Uh, yeah. Um, I'm guessing he was just carrying a dead fly around for just such an occasion <laughs> sort of thing. But um, it was like, this is a silly movie, but it was done in a snappy way and nothing took too long. And like when we watched against Mechagodzilla, that was our major complaint is that nothing happened in a long period of time. It just dragged itself to the finish line. Mm. And this film, like it's, it just like keeps on moving and yeah, it's just easy to get on board with. Yeah. Yeah. It's the same story as you're saying, but just done well. So it's, it's a better version of the previous movie, really. It is a better version. Yeah. And it's funny because the ultimate moral of this story is this whole Godzilla thing of like, Oh, we can't ignore our mistakes. We must deal with them. Mm. And in a way I was like, are they kind of trying to tell me that they know that the previous movie was bad and they're just going to like do it over? Are we going to grant it that much depth? <laughs> well, I don't think that really is the case, but it sort of felt that way because in a way I can't see, I mean, people must have really liked um, the Mechagodzilla movie because I can't see any other reason to sequelize it because this movie, like you're saying, it feels like a, a more robust sequel to Mothra, which I had to take your word on. Mm. And I wonder what it would be like if you watched it without any precursor. But like to a, a large extent, it doesn't really seem like you need the the first movie. Like I know that they kind of explain, oh, we got the bones and all that. But I, I think you could, if you lifted some of the more confusing elements of it out, like having, I mean, the Shobujin twins, for example, like without prior knowledge, you'd be like, why are there two tiny women on my desk? I, you I know, guess yeah. that kind of thing if you lifted out those kinds of things then yeah you could probably could watch it just kind of fresh it's hard to put yourself in a place where you like could i watch this in isolation because i feel like it is so much um better than the previous film but then does the quality of this movie owe a lot of credit to the previous film even though i didn't think the previous film was good i find that with um metal gear solid actually quite a lot <laughs> when, when, when you when you play metal gear solid um you can play that fresh Mm. And, and as I think the majority of people really did. Um, and it kind of, the, some of the kind of confusing elements that were, um, not confusing elements, but there are, there are elements of the story that are, you know, from the previous games, but you didn't even need to play them. Like some of it might be a little bit confusing if you hadn't played them or didn't know them a bit more. Right. But it was almost like, it, it was like a remake of those first two games in a way with its kind of structure and things like that. And... I feel like this is the Metal Gear Solid of the Kiryu continuity. <laughs> <laughs> it is interesting when you go back and look, you know, at iterative stuff. It's like, well, if the previous installments are weak, does that, you know, yeah. what, what does that say when the newer stuff is better? Does the newest is the new stuff only good? Because it's like with Star Wars, actually, like Empire Strikes Back is so much stronger than A New Hope because A New Hope is quite kind of experimental and it's very slow in its pace. It's a different kind of movie making entirely to Empire Strikes Back. People love Empire, but Empire wouldn't be good without A New Hope, right? Mm. And that's things like we we really shat on um, that Mechagodzilla movie and it was bad. I still think it's bad. I still think Megagirus is worse. We, I enjoyed it more than you, clearly. <laughs> But we both liked it, yeah. and does that mean we should kind of maybe give um, against Mechagodzilla a pass because it helped this movie be good in the end? Well, like, was it worth it? Uh, <laughs> yeah, I suppose. Yeah, they've just been refining the formula. Really, mm. that's that's all it is. I mean, it makes me want to go back and see Megagirus, to be honest, and no. maybe no, because I think something will probably click in my brain and I'll end up enjoying it more. And I wonder mm, if maybe. Now that I've got into the mindset of it all, now I'll start to get what it is that people liked rather than just only looking for, I suppose there's, there's a certain kind of Godzilla movie that caters to my taste mm, and I I, mean, I, maybe I'm a bit closed minded with it all. I think I'm definitely closed minded. I couldn't speak for you, but I think my, my tastes are ill-defined and very specific. <laughs> <laughs> now, cause I, you're saying that you like the characters more and I did but only on the second viewing, because the second viewing, I watched it in Japanese. Okay. Uh, the English dub, it was it was worse than Against Mechagodzilla, in my opinion. I thought it was absolutely horrific. And uh, <laughs> again, you had the, the weird adults voicing kids thing going on. Yeah. The script was so stiff. And honestly, I think it just completely mangled the sentiment of the original dialogue. And I can't understand who thought it would be good enough to release it in that state, frankly. Wow. Uh, like I mean, as an example, when um, 
um, Shinichi goes to speak to the Prime Minister about halting the Kiyu project. I remember coming away from that scene in the English I've going, how the hell does he just walk into the Prime Minister's office? So like, <laughs> you should stop what you're doing. It's like, that's just so ridiculous. I, I, I didn't even think about that. I couldn't even take it seriously after that point. But the original dialogue made it so much more clear. Like, they were old friends, and it was friendly advice. Oh, I now, see. Now, like, right, that, one, yeah. that one line of dialogue, that that changes the sentiment of it completely. And it just made the scene confusing. And like, I think it's like, it's... I, I want to say it's lazy, but they went out of their way to take that line out. And I don't understand why they didn't just do, uh, like, a one-for-one translation. So did they did they cut a piece of footage or did they nope. just not do the translation? Or? The footage is the same. They just right. they just like they just boiled down the idea of the conversation. I was like, yeah, that'll do. He's telling him to stop, and it's like kind of the nuance of the conversation's gone. It just seems like ridiculous, and it and it, it's that kind of you know that bad old movie dubbing kind of thing. And I was like, there's there's been no effort in this, and like I just I found it so hard just to kind of take seriously, and like it just. To turn me off all the characters because it for me it changed their characterization as well mm. like you've got um yoshito and his friend azusa they're sat, sat on that bench outside and she's saying oh the way you talk about mechanics and machines like you got no time for women <laughs> you got no time for women that's not even the line <laughs> is it like, not <laughs> no he says like you, you you understand machines more than you understand human emotion oh and that's like, a lot more nuanced isn't yeah, it? yeah and it's like why did they have to add that and it's this stupid romantic implication that has to be in there regardless like just there has to be something like that in there doesn't there yeah and, you're right and, and I, um... I know it's a movie but <laughs> that kind of stuff it, I, it just it just annoyed me and i was like this is just just silly dialogue and it, it really turned me off and just dis- made me dislike most of the characters frankly so you watched the japanese one second you say yes and right. that that changed it because okay. like, I, I got the characters more i knew exactly what they were about what it was saying and i even liked akiba more that you know the bad guy Right. Uh, it's, uh, it's just, it's I don't know, just silly. I, I well, ma- maybe I just wasn't in a very good mood when I saw no, the I mean, American one. I don't know. Genuinely, I really appreciate hearing your frustration about that because I didn't um, get the chance to watch this one twice, and I, I really do. Mm. Um, that's more of a, a thing you you do. Mm. Um, so I I'm, I can only take your word for it. But while I I did really like the characters in this movie in a kind of a cartoony way i was aware that the dialogue wasn't great and when you bring up that point up it's like to me that's almost like proof that i lowered my expectations quite a bit for this movie probably mm. and that's maybe what helped me to, to enjoy it more <laughs> i think the voice acting is probably it's a little bit a little bit better than the previous movie but I think that's also that the on the acting in the movie is better, which yeah, gives true. the American voice actors, you know, script faults or, or not. They've got more to work with on screen. Um, I can't remember the characters' names. I'm terrible with, with Western names, let alone Japanese names. But the elderly guy, you know, the main like Mothra guy. Shin- Shinichi. Yeah. Yeah. It's hammy, but, you know, he's, he's very expressive in his acting. Um, and a lot of the, the previous acting we've seen is very stiff. Um, yeah. Yeah, I think the the kid character he was better than than Sarah in the previous movie. They gave him something to do, which actually affected the story. Yes, um, I I wanted you know. to see a bit more of him because he was quite instrumental in like I mean he brought Mothra back essentially, and to he, me, he didn't get enough of a spotlight. Mm, I I liked when he kind of got involved in that, and then again involved in the the debris when the city was getting um, attacked because so frequently we get introduced to human characters who then don't really experience. Um, the, the kind, kind of, of like on the ground yeah the street level destruction we yeah. see military types who fight Godzilla in like you know aircraft or from a mecha or whatever we've seen that but to see your characters actually kind of be be buried by rubble was like something we haven't had for a while and I, I felt a connection to the characters there so and I find actually when those things do happen in these movies we tend to gravitate more towards that and I notice we bring it up each time mm, <laughs> when there is something yeah. like it's, it's something impactful and I think a Godzilla movie it needs that kind of stuff. Yeah. But I definitely felt like the effects were not as strong, especially in the compositing. A lot of the times where you get like Mothra flying or landing on a building, you can see like the lighting's just different. Like, and Godzilla it will be like, strange. not Godzilla, sorry. Mothra will be like too pale compared to the scene they've placed her into. And you can just see like, well, she's been. That's cut where she out. flew over the school, wasn't it? Yeah, exactly. That I, shot. I noticed that. And I was wondering if that was an effect to make it look like she was further away. 
Maybe they did do something like that. Like kind of like like a mistiness. Maybe, but it doesn't work because you just see the layering of like, well, she's just not there. Mm. Um, and it's, it's a shame because the Mothra um, model they've got, you know, is really good. Um, I like the detail. I mean, it doesn't look like a real creature. It looks like a puppet, but, you know, it's cool. I like these, the yeah. style of it. The style of both Mothra and Godzilla is really good. I'm assuming it's basically the same Godzilla from the previous one. It's the exact same, like, effect. As far as I, as far as I can see, it's, it must have been the same suit. It yeah. It like it to me anyway. But all of the city stuff in this, it looks quite toy-like to me, and it's fun to watch, but it doesn't have the sense of scale that we've seen in other Millennium-era movies, like, especially in Godzilla 2000. Mm. Um, which is, you know, not that much older than this, but considering it's the first one in that era, you would think that, that one would be the most dated, but if anything, that one looks like it had the most money put into it. Mm. Um, so yeah, the effects, I enjoyed them, found them really entertaining, and the fight scenes were, like, really fun in this movie, but they weren't that well choreographed and they're sort of disjointed. Yeah, I think they had to kind of... They were. I feel like they're quite slow and lumbering, and I think they... I suppose they had to pad out the fighting so that um, Yoshito could kind of have his you know, journey towards Kiyu. Mm. Um, and so, and because of that, I think it missed some of the some of the like the ridiculousness from the against Mechagodzilla fights, like the jumps into the sky and stuff like that. And they might have also slowed it down um, so they wouldn't juxtapose too much against Mothra's slower pace. You it's know? got a couple of silly things, though. I think, like, yeah, this, like the flip. And yeah, there's stuff one where like he, he throws Godzilla in the air, doesn't he? Like, key, That's, like, throws that was him. great. That yeah. was really good. So, there's a few of those bits, but um, yeah, there's a scene where Mothra like pushes Godzilla to the ground, but you don't really see him. The transition of him stood to the transition of him on the ground is, is non existent. It just cuts from him. It's just a 90 degree cut, which is like, I'm stood and then I'm on the ground. And it's just like a hard cut. And it's just like, well. There was also a shot where he just fell over. Yeah, and I wasn't few, sure why he yeah. fell over. <laughs> it's just like, okay. So in execution, it's weird. The effects just weren't as good. Yeah, it didn't hit the mark. But I did enjoy them more just because I felt like they were backed up by a good narrative. Mm. Really, the movie from kind of maybe the start of the second act or the middle of the second act, um, yeah, from like about the halfway point, it's like the fight scene's on. Um, Mothra and Godzilla start fighting. Kiryu comes in, you get Mothra... Um, she sacrifices herself for her babies. No, I uh, like I I liked you know? her sacrificing herself for her babies. But the whole the whole idea though, I feel like they, I feel like maybe they missed the point they were trying to make to some extent. So okay. like the whole it was almost like a not a prophecy, but almost like a prophecy from the Shobujin twins to be like, Mothra will save you. Don't worry, you've got to you know leave leave death where it is. Don't bring back Godzilla. She'll she'll save you. It's fine. And while she does help. She dies, but she dies saving her children. That's kind of her thing, to be fair. As that well. is her thing. But <laughs> ev- even the ch- children, they only help. And the ultimate person to kind of, you know, finish the fight was still Mechagodzilla, uh, thus yes. proving that they still needed Mechagodzilla. And it's like, uh, mm. and that's where it, it sort of lost me when that kind of Mothra half of things fell by the wayside, which was a shame. It's definitely a, a massive flaw. It's probably, there's just two big flaws to me. And one is that, um, yeah, they they seem to forget the moral or rather the motivation for Mothra to be there at all. It's just like trashed at a certain point. And also Godzilla, I know this is a sequel, so we saw Godzilla in the previous movie, but we said this before, Godzilla himself does not really have any personality to speak of in either film. Mm. He comes, he attacks, he's, a, he's the antagonist. I get that, he's destructive. But there's no real kind of personality. It's just brute force. Like, I'm going to come and destroy some buildings. And it's like, okay. Yeah. Yeah. And I know it's, we, we say this all the time. This is one of our recurring topics of like, how do you portray Godzilla's personality and all that. But whether it's the same or not, it's better to have some than none. And neither this one or the, the film that came before it like really could do anything with Godzilla as a character. He's um, just a destruction, destructive yes, force. And nothing that's more. it. I mean, you could kind of, you could maybe argue he wants to get his revenge on Mechagodzilla at a, at a push. Uh, yeah, but he, yeah, no. <laughs> but that's, yeah, exactly. So, yeah. Mm, whatever. It's just, a, it's just a failing. So I think those are the, the two big flaws. I mean, the other flaw is notwithstanding, like you said, the translation's bad and the film is overall very stupid. Um, it's just a dumb story and it, things just happen like you're saying I mean this is this is better established in, in your version in the Japanese version but the way he was just like oh you know you just shut down this project and the, all the way through the Prime Minister of Japan is just like making choices just on 
instinct i guess and there's yeah, no he's just kind of like his eyes widen he's like um i need to make a choice <laughs> yeah and it's like there's no insight to his thought process or why we as an audience should trust his decision making mm. it, he just has to say things to keep the story moving and yeah i think as i mentioned before i probably lowered my expectations to such a degree that i just didn't even like register a lot of those issues whilst i was watching it mm. um Stand by that whilst I was viewing it, it was my probably the most I've enjoyed a Godzilla movie for quite a while. But in retrospect, listening to your criticisms, which I think are completely justified, you're right that it's not it's not a fine example by any stretch of the imagination. Um, you know, against um, all, sorry, all that attack is is definitely um, better than this as a movie. Um, and perhaps actually referencing um, all that attack again. I've seen that movie a couple of times, whereas this one was the first time I'd seen this. Yeah. So it was like a fresh, like I have not seen these fights yet. And So yeah. maybe if you'd rewatch this one. Yeah, yeah. We'll see when you rewatch it. <laughs> did you enjoy the Honda commercial? I did, yeah. It's like, take my car. Uh, why are we talking about a car? <laughs> oh, <laughs> so, so I give you these keys. <laughs> it's close for keys. That was and... the, it was like, it wasn't a very good advert, was it? Because it was basically just the keys. And that was it. Well, no, because he got he got in the car and he was able to, to to achieve what he wanted to achieve in the car. Wait, did you see the car? Yeah, he got oh, into the what? car and he drove away. And without the car, the Honda, the Honda, you know, he he wouldn't have been able to do that. So it was definitely because of having the Honda Civic or whatever it was. Um, <laughs> yeah, I did, it's funny. Like I saw the advert, like because it was the keys, <laughs> yeah. but then I didn't even notice the car. It just like washed over me completely. I I just saw the keys. I was like, oh, that's a yeah Honda product placement. Yeah, the, the movie was paid for in that like two second shot. <laughs> was it a nice car? Yeah, I think it was red. Um, <laughs> and, and I'm going to buy a car soon, actually. And I thought, you know what? You're going to get a Honda. If there's a Godzilla in town, <laughs> I'll, I'll know I'm all going to be all right. So. You'll be safe in a Honda. It has the horsepower to escape. Um, so I feel like I should be a little bit more positive. <laughs> and I'm trying to think about some of my favourite moments from this. So... The drill hand. That was really gnarly. That was so good. That was like yes. um, they like they kind of like oh. a megalon style drill oh, yes, hand. Yes. Like they, they they got rid of the blade, and it's like, oh, what else can he do? We're gonna have and a yeah, good time when hand. we get to those movies. We really will. Right, we're building up to. We've done it in the right order because we're building up to good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it was a real step up from the stab that I went on about in the last podcast. Yes, it was I, like, I, I thought of you when I saw that drill. I was like, Graham's going to be so happy right now. It was almost a bit too much, I, I actually, to be honest with you. I liked it, but I was like, it stood out in the movie. It was brutal. I, I think the whole movie is very cartoony and, and quite kid-friendly, really, which a lot of the Millennium Era is, which is not, which is not a bad thing. Um, and that scene, although enjoyable, I felt, was probably a, a bit violent. It was considerably more violent than the last yeah. one. I like when you see, like, when uh, Godzilla's doing his atomic breath, they're always quite pretty sharp you know um like he charges up pretty quickly and then just like eradicates whatever's there and he does it a lot in this movie mm. and when i was watching with uh my other half she was saying oh he's not even charging it up he's just like blasting know, it's straight just away. Like automatic <laughs> yeah um there's um some good attention to detail as well with um with the shobajin twins and like there's the that that mothra symbol is um it's like the sun with a crucifix essentially okay um in front of it and that's kind of the whole thing in in mothra it's quite religious in its tone i suppose but they they kind of doing that again in this movie so when you uh when you see the shobajin twins riding on um one of the mothra babies at the end, like they stood there they stood there making that that symbol against the sun and oh, yeah, yeah. speaking at another point you can see the cross behind them and stuff like that again so i think it's kind of that you know that meticulous direction as well from Tezuka. That's obviously that's his that's his main skill. That's I think his we've established thing. that he's really good at that. Yeah. And there's a great line in this movie where they say, Giant worms are surfacing. And I just When did they say that? <laughs> well when the giant worms were surfacing, <laughs> I think. Yeah. There might have been then. <laughs> I love it when you get into a situation where you can say something that in context makes perfect sense, but out of context it's just like <laughs> just total nonsense. I've got a fave um, moment from this. Go on. It's just one shot, and you might recall it. It's this shot where Akiba's flying that like jet, yep, 
And there's this shot from like this from the ground looking up past Godzilla, and the jet flies up behind him and blasts him with a bunch of missiles. Yes. And then they sort of like turn their thrusters off and like fall into shot and then blast the thrusters back on again and zip out. Yes. And it's like this two second shot. And that was, I it was just really, really strong. And honestly, like it stood out to me because a lot of the action, as I keep on saying, what I felt was poor, quite poorly. Um, choreographed in this film it wasn't very meticulous as, as is um you know contrary to the rest of the film we were complimenting mm. but that shot was like it stood out as being really kind of like a statement piece to me yes i know exactly which one you're talking about it, it yeah. characterized you know the pilot really nicely yep um just looked great yeah and often when we have these like military vehicles like all the tanks come in or the the aircrafts come in and they fire at godzilla it's quite boring Honestly, like, because it's just a yes. plane, and you know it's not going to achieve anything either, because it's just, they never beat Godzilla with a, with a plane, for God's sake. They always give it a go. But that <laughs> shot kind of justified it. It was like they're really trying. You can see that the characters were actually like doing their best to really put, you know, to put Godzilla off balance. And I really liked that. It was really, really good. No, yeah, you're right. Actually, kind of hearing your view on this as well, actually, it's helping, helped me warm to it a little more. Um, is seeing it from that you know point of view because like, I thought it was kind of a just a cool shot, but thinking about it with that character mm. and like being in that situation, that does actually add a bit more gravity to it. Yeah, there's a lot of you see that in MCU a lot where you don't necessarily see the characters, but you see them the machinery they're operating or whatever, and you know that that character's inside. Mm. Um, so it's that kind of thing where it's like, yeah, we're only seeing an aircraft firing at Godzilla, but in this occasion, you felt there was a personality behind it, which is what's so all, so often missing. Um, it's pretty good. Okay. <laughs> I, I, I'm warming more to it now. I would say it's more than pretty good, but I, I really appreciated hearing your criticisms because I think I was probably, maybe I was a bit soft. I let it pass a, a bit too, too easily. <laughs> it's probably not <laughs> as good as I thought. Okay. So, I've prepared a little quiz. <gasps> yes. Lucky me. Yeah, lucky you. Now, actually, before we start it, did you see the end credit scene? I did. Okay, and right. I thought maybe I should have saved it for a live viewing, but no, <laughs> I, I watched it. And I'm curious, actually. I was hoping you might have some insight into what was all that about. <laughs> okay, yeah. we'll do the quiz and then we'll get on to it. <laughs> okay. Um, okay, so, eight questions. Oh, my word. Okay, question one. What did the screen say to Yoshito as he was hanging off of Kiyu? Was it A, goodbye Yoshito, B, good luck Yoshito, or C, Akane was cooler than you? Oh, uh, it was the, the first one, I think? Yes, it was. So yeah. it said, yeah, sayonara. Sayonara Yoshito. is what it yeah. says, yeah. Yes, yeah. exactly. So, correct. Right, question two. What were the Shobujin twins called? Was it A, Kyoko and Masako, B, Hasabe and Mami, or C, Hio and Mana. I'm going to guess and say B. Incorrect. It was Hio and Mana. I didn't really understand why there's two twins, because most of the movie they speak in unison. It's like, you could just have one person for this job. <laughs> they they always do that, though. But that's why? Their, that's their why thing. is there two if they always speak in unison? I would say it's because when they sing, they sing in harmony, so they must uh... speak in harmony. Well, they did. They did have some lines that were separate towards the end. But. Yeah, I think they did in Mothra as well, actually. So maybe that's not entirely true. But oh. if anyone can tell me what those other names were referenced to, then get on that Twitter. Uh, yeah, get on there, and I'll give you a much coveted shout out. <laughs> <laughs> the first of many. Hopefully, probably not. Anyway, okay. Question three: How many movies have been directly referenced in this Kiryu continuity? Not including Godzilla against Mechagodzilla and Tokyo SOS, obviously. Okay, right. How many movies? Okay, so this is a guess. Yeah, you got to guess the number. Sorry, this isn't a multiple choice, this one. It's, it, this, this is varies, this quiz. Um, it's at least three, because you have obviously the original Godzilla movie, yep. the Mothra movie, Yep. and then the kaiju that Godzilla kills in the ocean mm -hmm. is uh, an, a known character as well. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to gamble and say five. <laughs> Because there's at least three. Wrong. Oh. So this is a bit of a... Maybe this is a bit of a grey area question. I would, I would have given you a point for either three or four. Okay. So, like, the actual movies referenced were Mothra, uh, War of the Gargantuas, and 54. Okay. So 
I was, and I kind of say four because of Kamibas, who was from Space Amoeba. Yeah. Even yeah. though the movie wasn't referenced. But he's the reference. He's there. I mean, he's there. Yeah, so that's, that's specific. Yeah, because it confirms, like, oh, that's a this link. Is, this is why, like, because I think some people would dispute it. So this is why I'm saying either three or four. Initially, oh, right. I thought four, but if I'm going to get really nitty gritty technical, maybe it's three. There's, there's weaker connections than that available in other franchises. So, well, yeah. okay. <laughs> Question four. I've done some of these questions. Like, I don't know how you'd ever, ever know them. <laughs> uh, so what is the nickname of the baseball player that cameoed in Godzilla against Mechagodzilla? Uh, um, Kamikaze Ken. <laughs> I wish it was. I don't know anything about baseball either, so... <laughs> uh, his nickname is Godzilla. Oh, um, I... Uh, were you going to say it? It rings a bell. <laughs> it's the thing. You know, I feel like that's yeah. something that was just buried away somewhere oh. in the grey matter. Okay. Question Question five. What does Kiryu mean? Is it A? Dragon. Me- oh, hang on. Is it A? <laughs> Mechanized dragon. <laughs> All right. B, automatic megalosaur. Or C, robot croc. Well, Kiryu means dragon, right? It means mechanized dragon. Well, the protagonist in Yakuza, the video game series, is called Kiryu. It depends on the kanji that's used. Oh, I see. Um, okay, question six. What kind of plant did Sarah have in uh, Godzilla against Mechagodzilla? Is it multi choice no oh i know what it is and if you said it i'd be like yes i know i know that's why i didn't include multiple choice um it's this kind of grass that like when you touch it it like recoils in stuff it's sorry maybe i should say what was the name of the plant the name of the plant yeah what what was the species it's this grass that moves (laughs) (laughs) it's um angel grass or something like that oh that's a good guess it's quite nice uh, no, it's sleeping grass. Okay. It doesn't sleep though, it moves. Well... It's more active than any other kind of grass, so it's not sleeping at all. It's weird how it's got that name. Maybe because it's the way it moves is sleepy? No, oh, it's just a stupid yeah, name. I don't know. Okay, so, question seven. What sex are the Mothra larvae that hatch in Tokyo SOS? Uh, maybe one's a boy, one's a girl? Oh, you got it! Yeah. Yeah, that's good. Um, okay, question eight. Uh, which DNA sample besides Godzilla is visible in the post credits scene? Is it A, Mothra, B, Gyra, or C, Kamibas? Oh, right, okay. Um, B, Gyra. Afraid not. It yeah. was Kamibas. That was all from memory. Because all, all I could really remember from that was that there was a year on the screen as well. Yes. And yeah. that's what stuck in my mind. And I was like, did they want to make another sequel to this because we know that they don't right final wars which is the next movie is not yeah. a sequel no it's not right and i was wondering like well does this this is like a post credit scene that doesn't really go anywhere well that's the thing they they were leaving it open to the idea because the um uh, Kamifas that washed up on the shore was originally going to be a new kaiju completely called leo pluridon oh. but then they didn't want to have a new kaiju and then kill it so they're like okay let's use Angiris. but then they didn't want to kill him off in case they used him in another movie in this in this saga so uh it was then suggested to use gamera and initially i thought it was gamera because it's a big turtle i thought it was gamera as well yeah but it's not a toho monster so the only (laughs) turtle they had was from space amoeba and that's kamibus so but then they never did a sequel they never did one yeah so it was all waste of time so i guess the idea was like they were going to make more mechanized kaiju i'm glad they didn't to be honest with you because um i don't really care for the mechanized stuff so much i mean i neither do i i would uh, that said i would like to see a um mecha Ghidorah. to be honest i would like to see that in the legendary monster verse oh yeah yeah i mean i yeah i'd like i wouldn't mind seeing any mechs like in the western ones because we haven't had that yet so that would be a new take um and i really like pacific rim so that you know could be interesting okay let's do a little count up let's see how many you got so you got four out of eight. That's not bad. Which is pretty good, to be fair, considering some of those were like, not exactly, they weren't even in the movie. <laughs> so, um, yeah, not bad. I'm, I'm impressed. Oh, thanks. I, I feel vindicated. <laughs> <laughs>
Okay, so, yeah, overall thoughts? Now we've had this discussion. Um, we usually reflect on whether or not this could be a first Godzilla movie. Mm-hmm. I think by virtue of it being a, a sequel to many different things, probably not. We, we tried to dissect, could you watch this without seeing anything else? And I think the answer is probably no. Um, because whether you like the previous movie or not, the Mothra stuff is things, that's something we already know about, you know. Um, there's, there's just too many things that you kind of would have questions about. So it's a good movie, but it's not a good first Godzilla movie, just to answer our trademark uh, recommendation. But overall, yes, I would recommend it. I'd say it's it's one of the one of the better Millennium Era ones, probably top three, easily top three. I mean, how many are there? There's like seven? Uh, the- six. Okay, Um it's top two then, I would say. It's probably oh top two. Okay. Um, it's, it's fighting for that top slot, I think, of the Millennium Era. It's very good. Okay. So, yeah. So, not for newcomers, but one one for the more seasoned fans. Yeah. Yeah. Is, yeah. That's, I think that's fair. I mean, that's pretty much what I think as well, really. Um, so, yeah, because it, it, it felt too much like a sequel. Because I mean, it is a sequel, obviously. Um, even though they kind of did a good job of uh, explaining key plot points from mothra 1961 um it's still like i like i said before it is i feel it's much better having seen mothra and like and like i said with the showbridge twins just having them appear without any adequate context is a bit i would Mm. feel is a bit jarring for anyone who's a newcomer one of my overall thoughts i think for this though was i again it, it feels like a little bit of a wasted opportunity because it's quite strange how yeah, it would have been nice to see this conflict, a uh, bit of conflict between um, Shinichi and Yoshito, because he was working on the very thing that Shinichi was trying to stop, mm. and to perhaps have had like that's a kind of a struggle for Yoshito, who is who doesn't really have a choice except to keep you know uh, maintaining Kiyu. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Because that that that's his life, and I feel like that would that would have lent itself quite nicely into that. Um, arc for Shun, the grandson, yeah, you know, taking up the mantle of his grandfather and you know summoning Mothra again. And I feel like that that dynamic would have been, it could have been explored. Like, but they they don't, didn't even really hint at it. I don't think they even discussed the fact that you know he's working on this thing that he's trying to stop. And I suppose you don't see a great deal of interaction between um, Yoshito and his grandfather. So no, yeah, I f- I feel like that that would have been. That would have been great, and I feel like that was just a missed opportunity. It would have added a lot to the scene where he finds them in the rubble if they'd had some conflict prior to that. Exactly, because he, he yeah. appears there, and then he's like, "I'm off to fight, off to fight Godzilla in mm. Mecha Godzilla," and they're like, "Okay." It's deeply flawed. Yeah, and it's it's a shame. So, like overall thoughts, yeah, missed opportunities, but considerably better. Then against Mechagodzilla. And yeah. yeah, I I but yeah, I wouldn't give this to a newcomer. If you're looking for a, a real good Godzilla knockabout, it's it's a prime example, but it's not classic Godzilla material really. No. So um yeah, we I mean we're nearing the end of the millennium era now. We've got one more one more film left, Final Wars. And it's a long one as well. Yeah, two hours. Two hours long. Yeah, it's hefty. Because most of them are, are quite short. Yeah, yeah, they are. Have you enjoyed it so far? Um, it's been very patchy, I think, as is evident in our discussions. It, it's 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 like a very up and down um, in quality. Like like the last movie, basically hated it, and this one was just totally different. I really really enjoyed it. Um, so yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if Final Wars was again like something completely out of left field. I'll only be able to properly evaluate it when we've completed the, the series. Yeah, I was thinking we could have a short bonus episode once we've wrapped up the era to kind of talk about our overall thoughts of the whole era and have uh, and, and rank our favourites. So I, I think I've guessed your top two already. But yeah, so looking forward to the next one. I think it's going to be... I think it's going to be good. I think I'm going to... I'm going to come at it with a slightly more critical eye because <laughs> I maybe slept a bit on, not literally slept, but, yeah. you know, I was I was probably slacking off on my critique on SOS a bit. Um, so, but yes, I am looking forward to it. I've got renewed enthusiasm now. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So where can the people find you on the internet, Graham? If people like listening to us talk about Godzilla, uh, you can search Fossil Arcade, which is both a podcast and a a video series on YouTube. Um, there's a handful of podcasts, video game discussions. There's over 50 
over 50 videos on Ooh. YouTube discussing video games. So go take your pick, you know. And if, if you didn't like hearing this, then you probably turned off a while ago. <laughs> but yeah, Fossil Arcade, you can find me anywhere. Okay, cool. So for anyone who's listening to this on Spotify or Stitcher or whatever, we're also on YouTube um, where we upload the podcasts. And for anyone listening on YouTube, you can find us on Spotify and iTunes and pretty much every podcast platform out there mm-hmm. and if you want to chat to us just message us on instagram which is uh monster island radio or on twitter which is monster island rp we really would love to hear your thoughts about the show or your opinions on the movies we've covered so far it really would be nice to hear another angle other than our own yeah i feel like there's, there's so many things that we we miss and we don't know that we've missed them yeah absolutely because there's a lot in these films to talk about so there must be things people could just point out that when we're wrong so. <laughs> yeah exactly okay then so until next time everyone bye, bye. bye.